So how do you feel about the just-concluded finals night of Miss Universe Philippines last Wednesday night? For me, except for the long commercial breaks, everything turned out great and smooth. And what's so great about this whole thing is that I was sponsored by PLDT Home for this content, specifically for the finals night of Miss Universe Philippines finals night. So I'm very thankful to them. They, they gave me two tickets to the show, which allowed me to bring my photographer to take great pictures. So guys, if you haven't had... Um, if you haven't found the best internet connection here in our country, please try to check out PLDT Home for fast and reliable internet connection. So guys, let's now talk about the production of the finals night first. For me, the production was 50-50. Getting Marina Summers for the opening show was a great way to hype the crowd considering the people mostly watching the show were from the LGBT community who obviously was championing Marina Summers. She was truly fabulous as she set the tone or energy of the whole proceeding. It was fun, she was fun, campy, and lively. Actually, I'm only just beginning to rave about her because, to be honest, getting, also getting Michelle D to open the show with her as she does a cultural dance makes me feel like, wow, yes, there is some cultural element or touch to it. And probably what makes her opening so special is how these different colorful visuals pop out in the LED screen to complement her infectious energy. So watching Marina Summers live is really worth the price of admission. Diba? And then the girls started coming out in their gold dresses and the crowd really went wild. The gold dresses were so nice to look at and the fringe details really added so much life to it. And oh my gosh, guys. Thank you for those close-up shots of these girls. It was so generous. And I have to say, at this point, I just had to single out both Christy McGarry and Tara Valencia for standing out as early as that time because they had that winning glow. And I just had to say it on my Instagram account real time. Na ewan ko ba guys? Parang limaklak talaga nasang katutak na college and itong si Christy that night. Her glow just transcends even through the screen as I watch it again. And iba talaga niya, iba talaga yung aura niya noong gabing yun. And shout out as well to Tara Valencia, who was looking like a Miss Dominican Republic that night. So let's now go to the host of the show. Getting Jeannie Mai to host the show truly was the best, deci was the best decision of MUPH that it made in recent years. Kasi she added so much flavor to it and it feels like I'm watching Miss Universe live all over again. Her energy was really impalpable and it really boosted the audience's mood that night. Now she was just so natural with all her lines that it really didn't feel like she had to rely on her teleprompter the whole time. Alden Richards, for his part, was definitely an eye candy on stage. I have, however, yun nga lang, I feel with or without him, the show would have gone on. And I also enjoyed watching Gabby Garcia's hosting segments too. I think this was her first time to host a pageant ever and she really acquitted herself very well. Yung banter niya, her banter and one-line reaction, especially when she was paired with Jeannie Mai during the top 10 Q&A round, was really commendable. Now who knew Gabby could host well pala rin, di ba? Well, unfortunately, I cannot say very much the same with former Miss Universe title holder Arboninola. If this is something that she would like to pursue in the longer run, which is hosting, I would really love for her to loosen up and have more fun on stage. Because I was really expecting her to job more, to jab more with Jeannie Mai's quick wit on stage and those sassy one-liners. But she was just quiet and reliant on the tre teleprompter the whole time. So in time, Arboni will get better with this. So it is also at this point where I wish there were more backstage moments where they would pull out some girls on the side to see them behind the scenes in an effort to engage the crowd more. So I wish it could have been more interactive. So after the whole introduction and pleasantries, MUPH buckled down to work right away by announcing the top 20. All of the expected frontrunners and ladies made it to the first cut. As for me, I got 18 out of 20, which is really good. I missed Tacloban and Leyte and chose Florida and Miss Bantayan Island Cebu instead. I thought both Florida's Matea Mahal Smith and Bantayan Island's Dr. Juvel Dukay could at least get in just because 
of their authenticity and communication skills, but I was wrong. So, sa sobrang bilis, onto the swimsuit show na. I love how it shows Lola Amor to sing its hit song, Raining in Manila, because it just kind of complemented the waterfall rain backdrop in the LED screen, similar to how I feel Charlie put in Miss Universe 2015 did it without moving. And I just love how, you know, um, the lead singer just stood there without moving and let the girls walk past him. So it didn't feel that he was hogging too much of our attention and just lets the girls take center stage. And I just love it. And may I just say how I just love the province's name of each top 20 girl was spelled out in the LED floor. I thought the LED floor bearing the girl's province name gave us a good recall which province or city of the Philippines they are coming from. Or like a clever way of recall. Kasi diba, aminin natin wala namang flag-flag system pagdating sa mga provinces, diba? Diba? So as for the damit naman, as for the bronze metallic design of the swimsuits used here, I thought it was great, but you know how it is, but not as impacting as the swimsuits with panuelo that they used in the 2020 edition and the denim-inspired swimsuit in 2022. The metallic design was great, but you know how it is, na, I mean, there is no longer a wow factor because this metallic design for a wardrobe had already been used in the runway challenge in Sultan Kudarat earlier on. So a little bit of creativity could have been used here. But having said that, let's, not talk, let's now talk about the girls and their performance here in their respective swimsuit turns. So Nueva Ecija's Micah Martinez opened the segment here, and I was wondering why she just became so subdued with her performance here. She won the top vote, so I was, I was expecting her to be all the more sassy given how she has been performing with all the pre-pageant performances. So I don't get why she kind of held back here. Diba? Ganun diba napansin nyo? Then came Alexi next. And I thought, wow, someone finally turned up the heat for this round. Although that sarong snatch from her waist was not fluid, she still did not allow that temporary setback to ruin her performance. Now she was really on fire and gave us the right amount of sassiness on stage. And what I love about Alexi's performance here is that apart from her superb fitness level, is finally she knew how to pull back with her performance or pasarela with those cohesive poses on the side before finally unleashing her shayness inspired twirls. Na naramdaman ko as I was watching na may konting restraint na akong nararamdaman at hindi na masyadong gigil na gigil na magmala shayness na mag shayness twirls on stage. She didn't overdo it again this time and I'm so happy she finally did it this way. So now let's go to Leite naman. She came next, uh, right after Alexi, and may I just say how she looks so incredibly stunning with her makeup. Mas bumata pa siyang tignan dito with those hair waves. And ang galing-galing din itong maglakad for a pageant neophyte. Her hand on the waist pose in her final pose on stage made her look strong talaga given the softness of her look, of her makeup styling. And I love it. Her transformation has been absolutely stunning to watch all throughout here in MUPH. Then came Hawaii's Bianca Tapia next. And I thought she looked so imposing right there. Probably because of the high ponytail hair extension here. The high ponytail hair extension made her definitely look like a vixen and taller. But I wish she should have retained her straight hair na look during prelims or even before prelims just to give her a more youthful vibe but nevertheless her walk was really smooth now let's go to Tacloban's Tamara Osier naman and I feel she was the first girl in this roster who so far whom I felt was really enjoying every moment she had on stage the moment she took out her sarong you could already feel her gigil to showcase and I like and I like that because as she moved towards the middle to finally pose, oh my gosh, the facial pose was really giving. And I just love how the camera got to feature it for us to appreciate the level of command that she was displaying here. She really had a moment here, so I thought she could have also moved to the next round. And oh my gosh, guys, 
Here comes Pampanga Sairil Payuma, who moved like a tornado the moment she was called. Her stage presence is really strong, and she wasted no time in performing right away. Grabe, that walk can make you gasp that she is really a professional when it comes to catwalk. It was really smooth and powerful, aided by those fluid facial transitions and sarong play. Sairil really knew how to work it. Then came United Kingdom's Christina Chalk, who was looking every inch a diwata or goddess in her sleek ponytail hair styling. First of all, may I just say how her hair looks so way, way better compared to her preliminary look. I thought this was a very new and refreshing choice because it allowed us to appreciate more of her facial beauty. And as she walked towards the middle, I noticed I can really feel that her confidence was brimming. She was smoldering in those viper stairs left and right as you get to appreciate more the improvement of her catwalk at the same time. And I wish this girl moved to the next round and I kind of know why the reason why she didn't move past top 20 and it's probably because of her very safe wardrobe choices in the last few days of the competition. I wish she should have experimented with her styling choices when it comes to gown designs because most of them were just the same in front slit design but just in different colors. So, Atisa was next naman, and I love how she was so powerful with her walk here. And especially love how she has developed her signature pasarela walk wherein she would do this slow-mo twirl na on one side and then suddenly will give you, would give you a bounce, bounceful walk right away. And I'm just, I'm just sad that the camera wasn't able to focus on this because I feel this was the highlight of her performance. Now you can really feel that she was feeding off from the energy of the crowd rooting for her to win. Then Chris Chanson from Cebu came next and I thought she did quite well here. And for some reason I was feeling her nervousness here which made me feel she did way better during preliminary competition. I thought her smile in the end was the relief that I got from her out of showcasing herself in this round. It was still nonetheless a good performance, but I know she can do so much better than this. And up next is Victoria Velasquez Vincent, whom I feel performed way better with her walk here compared to her 2021 finals performance. However, there were two things that were weighing her down here. She just wasn't connecting to me because she was smiling less and the very high hair extension is making her quite harsh with her styling. And I also wish to look at the camera towards the end to really connect with us. And then, then let's go now to Northern California's Kayla Jean Carter, who, who I thought performed way better here in this round compared to her preliminary performance with that strong sarong pull at the very beginning. It was definitely a much improved walk where you can now see more of her smiling na and confidence at this round. And I thought she could make it to the next round too. And then Tara, after Kayla Jean was Tara, and at this point, I was just so relieved that her team decided to finally put her hair down after my disdain for her styling during the preliminary competition. And kita nyo naman talaga dito na Tara looks much more powerful and confident with her hair down. If there's anything I may have to nitpick, I wish she was smiling more here. Fierce na fierce kasing labas niya dito eh. And then Alexandra came next. And I just love how she did with her sarong play which makes me feel she is really a professional when it comes to her catwalk too. However, towards the middle of her pasarela in the end, for some reason her energy was slowly waning and I feel wasn't at par with the energy of the whole proceedings. Do you feel the same way? And now Stacy was up next and I thought she did so well here and held her own against her fellow front runners. I just love how she showcased something new here in this round which was her non giggleness for a change by not showcasing her slow-mo walk at the start. Because all throughout this season, every time she would come out to perform on stage, she was too giggle to showcase. And for this, but for this round though, she was noticeably mellow and subdued. And I like it because that gave us the assurance of her brimming confidence that she did not have to be too gigil to be noticed. So I like her aura here. Her quiet confidence was really soaring this time around. And now here comes Anita Rose Gomez naman, whom I feel just like Stacy was not overdoing it with her sudden head turns and show-stopping twirls for a change. 
it's, a, it's as if it's a whole new Anita Gomez that I was seeing here because she definitely went back to the basics by just pulling back and being restrained with her catwalk, which I feel is so on point with her classy, sexy branding. So I feel it was definitely a Miss Universe walk. And now let's go to Palawan's Raven Doctor, whom I can't help but be reminded talaga of Johnny Celobino with her performance here. Nalaban na laban with her hair straight style, with her straight hair styling, facials, and killer moves on stage. Just go talaga ng Johnny Cell, Johnny Cell talaga yung labas niya talaga dito. So you know, at this point in time, I know she didn't make it past top 20, but I just hope this lady is feeling fine with her placement because I am telling you guys, she could, she has the makings of a future Miss Universe Philippines title holder. And then there's Christy Magari, whose glow has not diminished from the very beginning. Just like my commentary about her previous. Prelims performance, Christy did not need to overdo her sexiness with any extra movement because she is already a sexy, a sexy, beautiful woman in her own right and just lets her humongous stage presence do the talking. And this is exactly what she did. At this point, I thought she was just pure perfection and headed for the crown, full stop. And, Aus and then Australia came next. Wow, and I thought she was a good follow-up to Christie's strong performance. This girl also has a huge stage presence and I just love how she has blossomed to be a formidable contender in this year's pageant. I also wanted this lady to advance, but for whatever it's worth, I just hope Kimberly knows how she has grown so much in this year's competition that I wouldn't mind supporting her in her next pageant journey should she move back to Australia and join Miss Universe Australia. I feel this girl needs to join again to sustain her momentum. And then Bulacan. Wow. Chelsea Manalo. Wow. When she walked in, I really felt it was the second coming of Venusra in her turn here as her hairstyle reminded me of that. And I also like how she took it slow at the start with her walk, which, made, which really made us appreciate that beauty of her face here before proceeding to finish her walk. And the crowd really went wild for that. I feel like she moment talaga she dito, nag-glow siya dito. She really had that spark in this round. So it's as if, alam mo yon, she was gliding. And considering she was the second to the, la to the last lady pa to ramp, so... I'm amazed that she did not bore me with her performance. That, that was how good she was in this round. And finally, we go to Pasig Zelina Antonio Reyes, who closed the show with an improved version of her catwalk. As the oldest in the competition, it was the perfect close to her stellar campaign as a full-time mom who hasn't forgotten her dreams in life. Finally, you can really feel Selena's enthusiasm to ramp compared to her previous outings na halos one-dimensional na lang. Nakula mo na lang, yugin mo siya talaga para magka-energy. So I see this performance already as a win just for how she was able to finally come out of her shell to close her pageant career. Then the top 20 was called and there were no surprises here to be honest. Much as I wanted to include Hawaii, Australia, or even Palawan in this round, hindi ko naman alam who I would put down just for either one of these girls to go up. So that's how strong the competition was. That even though some of the front runners were quite underwhelming with their performance here, it was still not enough for them to be toppled down at this point. So as each girl was being called in this round, they were subjected to a casual interview with Jeannie Mai and Gabby Garcia. And here are my thoughts. Chris Jansen was called first and she was asked about a behind the scenes secret she would like to share to everyone. And I just love how she shared how everyone calls her an ate in this batch. I thought it was a clever way to bring up the age card being one of the oldest in, the, in this year's batch because it gave her the advantage or benefit for the judges to remember her easily. I thought she was just being honest and thinking of her and thinking of securing her top five placement. Now she was just very effortless in expounding her answer, so I thought she should move to the next round. Then Alexi was up next, and I thought she also did well here when she was asked about her favorite moment of the competition. And I love how she chose Sultan Kudarat, not only because she won something in there, but because she chose to highlight the camaraderie she has developed with her fellow sisters amidst the stress and everything. I thought 
she really also did well here. Then Chelsea was up next again and I just love how she was witty by explaining how she loves to eat her favorite food which favorite comfort food which was ice cream while incorporating her pageant life. I thought she was able to hit two birds with one stone in that answer there. That explanation may have been roughly delivered but she got she still got her points all across. I thought she also quite did well here. Then then Christy McGarry, Tagig. She was asked about one thing she misses the most while competing in Miss Universe Philippines right now. And she answered she misses her friends and family the most. But the way she explained it, in my opinion lang to guys, ha, in my opinion, made you feel she did not like the hustle and bustle of her pageant life lately. Na, I wish she could have ended it in a more endearing way, you know what I'm saying? Like by saying, I could only make one chance to fulfill my lifelong dream, so my family would understand. Something, something to that effect. Kasi parang feeling ko, without feeling na, you know, she was so busy and tired the whole season. You know what I mean? So that's just my opinion. And then si Vivi Vina, she was called next. And she was asked about the people she was looking forward to spend most time with after the competition. And I thought it was a no-brainer for her to answer about her parents, whom she misses so much. And also flew in just to be able to watch her for the first time ever on stage. And I thought she scored some brownie points here with me because despite looking quite harsh in her swimsuit styling right here. Then Sairil Payumo was up next and she was asked about the person that she would call in times of stress or days that she wasn't feeling her best. And I thought it was just weird that she chose her fellow pageant contestants knowing how all her fellow sisters were keeping her on her toes all the time throughout the competition. But I guess that's just how close she has been with all her fellow sisters, pageant sisters. No judgment here, but I just find it a little bit weird. So, Atisa Manalo naman was next. Whom I felt kill this round when she was asked about the person, about a person she would pick if she were to be stranded in a deserted island. And I love how she chose Miss Quirino, the girl next to her alphabetically. And I just love how, I just feel it was a very clever answer for her to pick a mom like her best friend, Miss Quirino, to for this question because it was really a good call that she never picked someone from her fellow top 10 ladies just to deflect the spotlight from her. So it was a clever move from Matisa's part to, to say Miss Carino here. Then it was Stacy's turn to answer and she just killed it with this run expectedly. She got the most flooring question of the night if she could share her juiciest secret and while she reluctantly answered first, I love how she was quick-witted to just direct it with her pageant persona of getting tons of hairspray for her look that night which could make her flammable. And I thought that was so weary of her. Na, alam nyo guys, talagang sabi ko naman sa inyo, pag pinahawak talagang nyo talaga ng mikropono si Stacey, eh, lalaban talaga eh. That answer really pleased the crowd, no doubt. She really had a Brooklyn moment right there. Then Anita Rose Gomez naman came next and she was asked about where she would take someone who has never dated a Filipina. And I love how her simplicity, I just love the simplicity of her answer here, linking it to her being family-oriented. And I thought that was heartwarming. Except that she delivered it to where very, very long talaga or worthy. So I just wish she could have reorganized her thoughts in coming out with a short and concise answer instead. And lastly, Baguio was the last to be called. And you can see it in her face that she was so relieved to be called last. And so she got this question from Jeannie Mai about what makes Filipinas the most amazing or awesome women in the world. And she answered being courageous or being empowered. It was a very light question, but she chose to answer very deep. And so I wish she could have said something lighter to be more impactful. And now we move to my favorite part of the show, which was the evening gown segment. And I wish the MUP organizers here chose a Filipino singer to serenade the girls instead of asking a foreigner to make it more special. It was definitely a missed opportunity. Lola Amor could have been part of this segment too, with Pantropico probably doing the swimsuit portion instead. Yung feeling ko. Do you also agree with me? 
Now let's talk about the girls in this round. Let's begin with Chris Tiffany Hanson, whom I really feel started the show with a bang in this stunning white gown made by designer Harvey Zenith. The gown featured an elaborate feathered sweetheart neckline, and I thought she had a moment right here. Na ang linis linis, ang yaman yaman ng itsura niya dito at ang bango bango niya talaga ng tignan dito na very Oscar de la Renta. And just and I just thought, yun nga lang there were some awkward facial transitions at the start, especially when the camera was panning to her face as she was touching her neck. I thought that was a very awkward pose. But nonetheless, she was very elegant all throughout. Then came Alexi Brooks in this emerald green Rian Fernandez gown inspired by the nebula which has a plunging neckline, draped skirt, and a one-sleeve detail. Finally, for a change, gustong gusto ko tong damit na to because she showed something different. The gown Alexi chose was a non-traditional for a pageant but we all also have to understand that she is also a non-traditional contestant. So I felt she was very Grace Jones here in this gown, which was very apt for her. It's hard, futuristic, and very on-brand with her imaging as an androgynous queen of this year's MUPH. The green color also made her definitely a standout. So rewatching this whole thing on tape, I know it could be polarizing, and I see where you guys are coming from. Maybe siguro they would have done away with the slit and just opted for a hood to, as an accessory to make, an, to make a more impactful statement. Or siguro probably the draped skirt could have been replaced with a figure-hugging one. But you know what guys? For whatever it's worth, Alexi showed something new to the audience. Kasi aminin talaga natin, Alexi is not your cookie-cutter beauty queen. So I feel she has the right to experiment and play around with designs. So yun nga lang, I wish it was more streamlined. Na... And I would choose this gown than all those sexy abs-bearing gowns that she had before at any given time of the day. Then Chelsea came out in this crystal embellished gown with a feathered cape and I thought she really had a moment right here. She looked so regal, elegant, and luminous in this wardrobe which made me feel like she is a queen talaga in her own right. In a very YSL couture, that feathery number wrapped around her chocolate skin is really stunning. And I love how the color is so great in contrast with her skin color. So it just she just really pops out on stage. And as you and you notice guys as you as she started walking, it felt like she was gliding talaga or floating in air. Now she really did not need to do anything extra to be noticed right here. She just glided, she just floated, walang pagimik gimik maglakad. Now, she really shone in her simplicity. She really shone in this round. She was magical. And I thought that why, that's why the judges fell in love with her. Now, at this point in time, I told myself, she could really get the top five. Pero ang tanong, sino kaya ng elbowin niya? Hindi ko pa yun alam at that point in time. Then Chrissy McGarry came out next in this white gown with crystallized embellishments as well. And with a side cut out silhouette then. And I thought, wow, that silhouette really emphasized her S-line or body figure. Now she just looks so expensive talaga in this very streamlined gown. Now, alam mo yung feeling ko, it's these types of gowns na one would wear while walking down for the Cannes Film, Re Film, Red, Film Festival red carpet. Na if only I may have to nitpick lang, I just wish she chose a different color because a lot of the girls were also wearing white on stage of this competition. So, it lacked the surprise or shock value. Tapos, sinundan pa niya si Bulacan na very magical din on stage. So, up next is VVV naman who wore a gown by Fernamato in a high neckline, long sleeve see-through dress. First of all, let me say, it, is an, it was an amazing gown for VVV. It fitted her perfectly. Her hem wasn't cut too long or short as it felt, it really felt like a glove. However, I feel this was really a strong or harsh look for her in, this, in terms of styling in this round. There was no softness to this look and I wish she could have done the soft route instead with her styling here because of her strong facial features. The top knot bunches all the more made her look severe. 
And it was at this point that I wish she wore her prelims gown instead because this was a, that was a better look for her. Her prelims look, I press presentation look, and even her hello glow look were the best looks that she has had all throughout season. So I thought VVV, also I thought all this time VVV had it all planned out, considering that this is already her second try for MUP. So it just boggles me. She missed in wowing me this time around. Na nandoon bigla yung matapang or mataray look na iniiwasan kung mangyari uli sa kanya. I, I was just feeling sad for her at that moment. Then Sairil Payumo was next and she wore this white gown with lots of embellishments as well. I thought she did okay here. The thing about Sairil for most of her Miss Universe Philippines journey here is that her strategy has always been safe. Yes, she is a killer in her catwalk. But when it comes to styling, I notice in styling niya parang pretty pretty lang. Alam mo yon. Looking at her performance here, I have nothing bad to say. No negative feelings about her pasarela and gown here. I just think it was just too pretty and safe for Miss Universe Philippines. There was no risk taking involved. Unlike say Alexi, how Alexi did it with her gown here. Now even if it was already polarizing many people. At least it still had recall. So I wish Cyril could have taken more risks with her gown choices in MUP. Cause sayang eh, abut kami na niya yung crown eh. Nandito na siya eh, so yun lang sayang. Then Atisa Manalo came next in this burgundy Michael Cinco gown with with an off shoulder neckline and high slit. Wow, she really came out wowing everyone. Very much similar to Catriona Stern in Miss Universe before. But as I watch, as I rewatch her on tape, I feel this was not the best gown for her that night. I understand, talaga, guys, that her team was really in a mission to deviate herself from her previous Miss International persona or styling. And as I realize it more now, the burgundy collar was really too strong for a collar that I wish she could have experimented on colors and textures more, like say. Choose another color or design that would have made her pop on stage, pop out on stage. Like wearing a gown with vibrant hues like yellow, aqua blue, or even hot pink. Just like how she was a standout during her previous national pageant. And because I feel her styling in her pre-pageant activities for MUPH were way better than her styling for both her prelims and finals look. Natatandaan niyo yung black and yellow green pleated skirt niya nung press presentation. She really stood right there. She really stood out right there because of that yellow green color. Tapos her evening gown wardrobe for the for her evening gown photo challenge wearing that aqua colored feathered gown, she again stood out there. Na mas maganda talaga yung atisa na nakita natin doon. Because yeah, as I study her look for her evening gown presentation here in the finals, it was very reminiscent of Catriona's gown. High slit, plunging neckline, dark red lipstick, luscious curls. So there was nothing new to show. So I wish she would have done something what Aishwarya Rai wore in Cannes, recent, in Cannes recently na alam niyo natatanda niyo yung lilac butterfly inspired beaded gown na sinuot niya sa red carpet. Anong year yun? Sige, Google nyo na lang. Alam ko na yung, basta alam nyo yung sinasabi ko. So, overall, nasasayangan lang ako. This was really a missed opportunity on Atisa's part. Then, Stacy was up next, and she came out in this beautiful white gown with embellishments made by Val Taguba. And I thought, it's an okay gown. It was a decent gown. She delivered the month. But was her gown memorable at this point? Hmm... Parang hindi for me. But at this point, I was just expecting Stacy to sail through the next round despite not possessing the strongest pasarela or gown in this batch. But then again, this girl really knew how to work the camera. For me, among the top 10 girls at, at this very moment, she had the smoothest facial transition. Her face glowed on stage and reminded me so much of Demi Lainel Peters. Yung, Hindi per, alam mong hindi performer sa gown, pero pag nag-close up yung camera sa mukha niya, yun yung sumasalba. Na marunong talagang makipaglaro, marunong talagang lumaro at umaura itong si Stacy sa harap ng camera. And I have to give it to her. She worked her way up and secured her spot in the bloodiest pageant 
of her pageant career so far. So let's talk. So let's now go to Anita Rose Gomez, who was next in line as she looks stunning in this Leo Amolda, is in this gold gown made by Sir Leo Almodal. For me, it really made her a standout because she looked like a reincarnation of Janice Lubina in this gown. Her gown reveal showcased her tiny waist, and I thought it also gave her a moment to similar to Krishna Gavidis evening gown moment last year. The straight hair also complemented her look here. But yun nga lang guys, I feel the reason why she also did not enter top 5 was because of her worthy reply in the Q&A prior. Na hindi niya nahuli, nahuli yung mga kiliti ng mga judges to make a strong great impression like how Stacy did it for herself in this round. And finally, we go to Tara Valencia who wore this red gown made by Vladimir Echeverri. Honestly, it was a safe gown but definitely way better than her look during the preliminary competition. She was also in red and there were two other girls before her who also wore red so there was no more wow factor for me when she came out. But don't get me wrong guys, ah, maganda si Tara dito that night but I just didn't like the styling, her styling here with that gold necklace that she was made to wear here. It didn't jive well with her gown. It wasn't accentuating her asset which are her face and her beauty talaga. Because the necklace really distracted her from the beauty of her face. And for me, there could have been more clever ways to use th this pearl necklace to make it more youthful. Like how Kylie Versosa did it for her evening gown in Miss International 2016. Natatanda nyo She just, you know, used pearl earrings to complement her presentation during that time. So, nagigets nyo. So guys, at this point in time, after watching both rounds for top 10, I thought the girls who would be moving forward to top 5 were still Atisa, Christy, sino pa ba? Si Chelsea, si VVV, and si Chris Hanson. I thought Sambales and Stacy could also get into in account of the latter strong Q&A per performance prior. Kasi having an interview... So, totoo lang, having an interview before the evening gown segment is really tricky. Kahit sobrang ganda ng arrive mo, but if you are able to win the judges' hearts like Stacy did here, wala ka talaga. Panalo si Stacy. That's how she earned her spot in the finals. So, the moment when VVV wasn't called and was replaced by Tara, I could only surmise her st VVV styling was the main culprit. And although... Kara did not have better styling too that time, but then she was saved by the beauty of her face. And I was no longer surprised, sa totoo lang, kasi as I observed some of the judges of the night were also the sponsors of the pageant. And alam nyo naman how Tara dominated most of the pre-pageant sponsors awards, diba? So the top five girls were called and immediately got to figure out in the Q&A round. Honestly, guys, this round was such the biggest disappointment of the night as most of the questions were very light and safe. There was no death or substance with all the ladies' answers as the questions were all safe. Now, it was just a head-scratcher why the organization decided to go back to its light questioning compared to last year where social issues like AI, alam mo yon, current events dominated the qu line of questions last year. Hence, it was a missed opportunity for the girls to showcase their personalities or opinions on social issues or how witty they or how witty they would have been. Anyway, sige. Let's now di dissect all the answers of these remaining ladies. First was Atisa. She was asked about the biggest lesson that she has learned from another woman and how it improved her life and she talked about her grandmother whom she looks up to in life. Well, for me, it was a great answer as it was very personable. Yun nga lang, I just wish she could have expounded how being kind can improve her life. Because I feel this was just the missing part of her answer. So I wish she could have added something to it, more weight to it, to have been more impactful. So overall, it was a very safe answer. Up next was Tara naman, who was asked about her biggest breakthrough in life. And I love how she talked about how joining Miss Universe Philippines gave her so much impact in life or her greatest achievement. I thought she really sounded great, but 
because nakita naman natin she lived she lived through it de ba the way she delivered her answer yun nga lang was just a problem because she stuttered a bit but that's okay because I can really see Tara has improved so much in this department already given she hasn't been like this when she started out four months ago the Tara we are seeing now here placing in top five was already a win for her a milestone for her pageant career now she was able to overcome so many challenges in her journey here including her much maligned communication skills so Stacy, what's up next naman? And I was ready for her to slay this round yet again. She was asked about a time where she was able to inspire another woman. And I love how she related it to her height issue to seal the deal. And sounded right. Element with that strong, powerful line. Just like the universe, we are limitless. And I thought it was on point na she could, yun nga lang, I wish she could have given a stronger answer by sharing more of a reason or an experience that challenged how people look down on her due to her height. But again, she really ended strong in the end, so she did well. So Chelsea was next, and she was asked about how she could empower her fellow women. And I just love how she made it personable right away by saying, sa simula ng answer niya, as a woman of color, and I, na, I was told, that beauty has a standard, diba? But the way she expounded it, yun nga lang, was less convincing because she wasn't able to give a concrete example of how to empower women. Now she just narrated, she, she just narrated from her experiences. So I thought her answer was very lucky. But this, at this point, but at this point, na realize ko, na pansing ko rin, I can't deny that she was just very calm with her demeanor all throughout. And last is Christy McGarry, and she was asked about the biggest challenge that she has hurdled in life. And while I love how she talked about how men has limited women like her in pursuing their dreams, I thought she could have been more specific by sharing more about her platform. Yes, she sounded right and ended strong with that claiming her destiny line. But as I try to digest it, it was quite empty in the middle. She may have been into she may have been intentional with her answer, but she forgot to cite an example to drive her point. So overall, as I've said, all of these ladies gave very safe answers. Despite this, I thought Christy or Atisa would win, given, given everything that they had shown throughout the night. And this is how I would have ranked them after Q&A. So si Christy yung number one ko, then si Stacy, si Atisa, si Bulacan and si Tara, yung huli. So the, moment was, so the moment Christy was called fifth place, we were all stunned in MOA Arena. I can't believe the judges were not on the same page with me. Now, I have my own reasons to lie why she did not win, but it's something that I shouldn't share here publicly as I have no proof anyway. Tara was declared third runner up next. And the biggest surprise of the night was Atisa only getting third place with Stacy and Chelsea as the last two girls standing. So yun guys, gulat na gulat kami lahat sa MOA Arena. I don't mind Chelsea winning, pero yung placement ni Atisa lang talaga yung nawindang kaming lahat. I'm really happy talaga with Chelsea's win. I told you guys, she was the ultimate dark horse of the competition and she proved it all the way till the end by winning MUP this year. Na she really defied all the odds to become this year's MUP. I reckon her very calm aura and no frills or clean pasarela sealed the deal for her. Na in love talaga doon yung mga judges sa kanya para doon. Na she looked every inch a queen that night. Meanwhile, Stacy charmed everyone with her wit. Pag pinahawak talaga natin si Stacy ng mikropono, she will kill it. But it was Atisa's Miss Cosmo World assignment that boggled the fans like me the most. We were all shocked upon learning she chose it personally pala. Kaya, that's why we are getting it now. From the way I see it, Stacy, ito lang theory ko guys ah. I'm not sure, I haven't asked MUPH about it. Stacy must have declined to compete internationally, so the first choice to compete in, this, in these remaining pageants went to Atisa, who obviously chose Cosmo World, probably again for the grand 
cash prize that she will be getting, $1 million. Kung talagang pagbubutihan niya doon, di ba? So, nagpaka-practical lang talaga si Atisa. So, third runner-up was Tara. So, she probably picked Miss Supranational. Christy, fourth runner-up, obviously couldn't choose because it's Miss Universe or nothing for her due to her age. So, that left two more titles without the queen to be assigned. So, the organization probably picked Alexi and Cyril from the top 10 for Miss Echo International and Charm respectively as their present age still allowed them to compete in both pageants. Kasi di ba si Chris Hanson couldn't also pick because she is already 34 years old. Si VVV naman must have probably declined to compete in those competitions too. So that left Anita Rose Gomez with no title. So feeling ko she must have ranked 8th to 10th overall. May sense ba yung analysis ko? So going back to Chelsea, let's be just be hopeful na lang about her chances in Miss Universe later this year. She is of a different mold. She is the first Filipina of black descent to be ever sent to Miss Universe. So that's already groundbreaking or history-making for our country as it could attract more international press for her or as a, as a country leading up to the competition later this year. And alam yun naman si how the organization loves publicity, di ba? Chelsea naman, as I realize now, offers a different kind of beauty. Beauty. I mean, we have sent mestizas, chinitas before. Baka naman pag iniba natin ang putahe natin this year by crowning Chelsea, baka makalusot na ulit tayo sa banga. Hence, our support will make or break her stint in Mexico. If she feels she has the whole Philippines by her side, that will give her the much-needed boost or confidence. If at this point, na wala pa siyang glam team that the Philippines could offer, yet she was able to already snag the crown as early as now, how much more pa kaya when she is given the access of her own glam team and the support of the Filipino people? She will definitely be unstoppable talaga. So we really have to do our part kasi I honestly feel like MUP delivers naman. Magaganda yung gowns nila na pinaprovide nila sa mga girls. Maganda ang styling. And so I hope she really sticks with her designer Manny Halasan because they just weave beautiful magic together. They create magic, beautiful ma magic together. So I'm just hoping at this point in time na Chelsea won't suffer the same fate of Rabia in Miss Universe during her time. So overall, guys, what a fantastic show despite the long commercial breaks in between. MUP crowned another strong contender for the crown this year. So congratulations on your come from behind win, Chelsea. Mabuhay ka. I can't wait for what you have in store for us for your year-long reign.